Hi everyone and welcome to the next video in the new Bobby Fischer series. We're going to look at another of his 60 memorable games here, this time when he played against Mario Bertok, the Croatian international master, at the Stockholm Interzonal in 1962. Larry Evans gives the introduction to this game which is entitled Hanging Pawns Unhung. If you've been subscribed to this channel for a while, you'll remember the videos I did covering hanging, hanging Pawns a while ago. If you haven't and you'd like to find out more, please check out the playlist entitled Openings and Theory. The introduction to this game, anyway, goes... Classical theory expounds the danger of hanging pawns, but Fisher demonstrates here, in a revolutionary manner, that they are just as often an asset as a liability. I'd give the rest of his quote, but it would spoil the game. So to get into it anyway, Bartok had the white pieces and opened with d4, to which Fischer replied d5, and not knight f6, which was his preferred answer to d4 over the course of his career. The game then went into a queen's gambit declined, with c4, e6, knight c3, and bishop e7, which is a move that Petrosian is often given credit for, although it had been played many times before he used it. The idea is to neutralize the pin idea of bishop g5, which would be possible if black had played knight f6 instead of bishop e7. Play continued with one of the many book lines in this opening, knight f3, knight f6, and bishop g5. And here Fisher writes, back to the main line, the shadow boxing is over which is an interesting comment considering that the game has now transposed into the main lines of the Queen's Gambit. So here he castled, and Bartok continued with e3, and then came h6, which Fischer notes Petrosian used to avoid, perhaps because it is slightly weakening, and Petrosian was a very defensive player. So now came bishop h4 and b6, which is Tartikawa's defense and flexible. The light square bishop can fee in shadow or go to a6, threatening c takes d4, and also with b6 move c5 is prepared. So Bartok continued with c takes d5. And Fisher writes, this is the best pr procedure, opening the c-file and preparing rook c1 with pressure on black c-pawn. So then came knight takes d5, bishop takes c7, queen takes c7, knight takes d5, and e takes d5, which is a lot of simplification already. And Fisher points out that the resulting games from this position can be drawish, but that he didn't mind because he'd already won this tournament. And here Bartok played bishop e2, but sharper is rook c1, and bishop e6, where one line goes, queen a4, c5, and queen a3, which is the line that Fischer used with the white pieces in one of his most famous games, the sixth of his world championship match against Spassky. So bishop e2 is what Bartok chose anyway. And then came bishop e6, which looks surprising because the fee and shadow was expected, but Fisher points out that at b7, the bishop would be blocking the b-file, which he's intending to use for operations later. So now Bartok castled, and then came c5, which is the logical push in the position, and now a move that Fisher gave a question mark, d takes c5, because he explains that after b takes c5, black has achieved hanging center pawns, these two pawns here, which in this case exert a tremendously cramping influence on white's future development. Playing knight e5 after black played c5 would have been better and pretty much objectively equal. So now came queen a4 and queen b7, simultaneously taking control of the b file, attacking b2, and supporting knight c6 should black want to play it. So now came queen a3, combining combining the defense of b2 with attack on c5, and now knight d7 to defend c5, and knight e1 from Bartok, which is an unusual looking move, and Fisher writes, what else is there? Black center is well protected, and he's ready to assume the queenside initiative 
with a5 and queen b4 which you now put into action immediately with a5 now came knight d3 attacking c5 so c4 now after knight f8 rook fb8 now with strong b file pressure so rook ab1 is how Bartok defended and this is the move that Fischer gave a second question mark showing that knight takes e6 was the best hope for white with good drawing chances of the position he says white's game is already difficult for example if instead of rook a b1 bishop f3 to add pressure to d5 now comes knight f6 rook f d1 queen takes b2 queen takes b2 rook takes b2 knight takes d5 knight takes d5 a lot of simplification but now c3 and suddenly black is winning thanks to this pass c pawn best play continues rook d d1 and not rook c5 because now comes c2 rook c1 rook d8 and black wins no matter how white answers so it would have to be instead um, yeah rook d d1 at this stage but now c2 rook d c1 rook a b8 king f1 rook b1 king e2 and rook takes a1 where if rook takes a1 then rook b1 simply is winning very easily for black so that goes to show you know how difficult the position is for white already and Bartok played uh, rook a b1 anyway so now came bishop f5 attacking that rook and winning the b pawn and Bartok count made a counter attack on d5 to try and keep the material equal if Fischer was to take on b2 but now comes knight f6 to defend d5 and rook d2 which is defending b2 and presumably hoping to double rooks and apply more pressure to d5 and Fischer now gives another variation to illustrate the nature of white's problem if instead of rook d2 bishop f3 was played here hoping for material equality and counterplay if black takes on b2 he gets into pretty serious trouble after queen takes b2 queen takes b2 rook takes b2 knight takes d5 knight takes d5 bishop takes d5 if instead rook takes d5 then bishop e6 rook c5 and surprising rook c8 gives black a good advantage in the overall position so it's better to take at this stage with the bishop but now comes rook c8 e4 bishop e6 bishop takes e6 f takes e6 and here despite the material equality white is completely tied up defending against this passed pawn and he can't avoid losing more material and inevitably the game so it's a yeah, very very tough position for white to be playing already you know it doesn't look at it, it looks pretty much equal but when you go into the depths of the game this is uh, what's going on um, and this is how Fisher saw the chess positions you know it's absolutely incredible and here after rook d2 he played g5 which is the key move of this game and the only one in the position that gives black a decent advantage in Fisher's own words it practically forces the winning of a piece knight takes d5 is what Bartok played giving up his knight for two pawns and the initiative and Fisher gives the alternative knight h5 which is much more advisable than knight h3 which is uh, much weaker but now comes knight e4 and rook c2 trying to hold b2 but now queen b4 is positionally crushing with a good advantage to black no matter how white plays so knight d5 knight takes d5 anyway so now comes knight takes d5 and bishop takes c4 and not bishop f3 to try and pin this knight because now there's bishop d3 with good advantage to black so bishop takes c4 and bishop e6 is how Fisher defended and he, he wrote of this position black has some temporary discomfort but it's only a matter of time before he consolidates and wins with his extra piece okay that's the end of part one